Hi, I'm George Cow, and today I'm here with one of my clients. Her name is Rose Diamond, and she's here to share with you some of the lessons that she's learned in our work together in the hopes that perhaps you'll be inspired in your own work of growing and, and developing your authentic business. So hi, Rose. Thanks for joining me. Oh, hi, George. It's lovely to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. So let me first start with your bio, Rose. I'll read that out so that everyone has a context of what kind of uh, business you're building, and then we'll go into some of the lessons that you've learned. So okay. Rose Diamond's uh, business is called Tribe in Transition. That's the website and, and the Facebook page as well. And Rose works with the whole spectrum of psycho, spiritual, and creative transition, which includes death, loss, and grief. Uh, on the one hand, or through the process of deep healing and the soul journey, to discovering and pursuing our soul work, to living our passion and creative empowerment, and then experimenting with how we can use all of this to co-create a new cooperative and new paradigm culture. So it's really cool. Uh, a lot, there's a lot there to, to work with. And later, of course, I will include the links to Rose's website uh, and Facebook page in the notes of this video. So to start off, Rose, let's talk about some of the things that you've learned as you've been developing your business. Uh, I think one of the lessons that, uh, that you mentioned was that you're seeing marketing in a different light now. You're seeing the idea of selling, uh, or maybe you don't think, think of the idea of selling now, but tell, talk to us about that. How, how has that transformed for you? Okay, great. Well, um, I'm one of these one of those people, and I'm sure there are many people like me who actually um, don't like the idea of marketing at all. Or in the past, I haven't. You know, I haven't I haven't found a way to relate to it. Um, so, so I've kind of avoided it. Really, um, I've been very I'm creatively prolific. So I, I'm continually creating. You know, books, eBooks, programs. And in the past, uh, well, for many years, actually, because I've been doing this for a long time, I would sort of pilot something and put it out to a few people. And then I didn't know what to do. And so I just move on to the next um, creation. <laughs> and so, I've, you know, in, over the years, I've built a body of work and, and I have a big vision. But that wasn't translating into actually reaching a lot of people. And I, so I think one of the first things I, I learned with you, George, was to re-language it, to rename it. And so instead of thinking about selling, which was a turnoff for me, I now think about it as um, connecting with people or befriending people, which is much more doable <laughs> for me. You know, it makes it much more friendly, much more easy. And so I've, I've kind of, for the, I think it's about six months I've been working with you, I've really taken the emphasis off trying to sell or put, try to put, make many make anybody buy anything it's more about how can i inspire people how can i uh, touch people how can i um just connect with people and and that's just changed the whole the whole scenario for me i, I feel completely different about it yeah it's so true gosh you know it's funny that we in human relationships if we have a friend it feels awkward when we try to sell to them. You know, nobody likes that feeling. And then, and yet, when we start to think about customers and clients, we somehow lose that perspective of, of, of a human relationship and we turn it into a transaction where, uh, well, essentially, we learn from sort of the old boys of marketing, maybe, you know, sort of the Madison Avenue, the, the corporate marketing where, you know, they literally call it the war room, you know, in some companies. It's, it's, it's a war with other competitors, but also with seeing the, um, the, the customer as something to be um, con conquered, you know. And so we, we, what we need to do is we need to wear them down. You know, we need, to, we need to persuade, twist their arm, you know, whatever we need to do. And so this is what... I think we're all detoxing from, you know, I think in, in our authentic business um, entrepreneurs is how can we do business, but in a way that's truly respectful and um, loving, you know, essentially, right? Yeah, absolutely. 
And I think that's part of the, the move from the old paradigm to the new paradigm that I'm working with, you know, yes. that, that, that whole sort of power of pushing, you know, competitive thing is all, very much the old paradigm. And, yes. and so I think for many of us, we are learning this new way. And you're a real pioneer in that with that, George. Thank you. Leading Thank the way. You. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, by the way, before we go any further, I wanted to mention for those who are watching, Rose and I didn't coordinate the colors of this video. You know, <laughs> my top is similar to her back, to her back <laughs> and, and by the way, my cat. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Always up here, you know, for, for these webinars sometimes. <laughs> um, and then, you know, my, my poster is similar to her, her top. But it's, it's just interesting, you know, alignment. Sometimes when we, when things are right, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting signs of alignment. Yeah. So the other thing that um, you've been practicing and kind of seeing the value of it's this idea of consistency. Mm -hmm. And do you want to say anything more about that? And how, how, why, why has that been important for you? And what does that mean for you? Well, it's very important. I, 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 again, I'm sure like many other people, I've been quite erratic in the past. Um, I, I used to um, do a lot of my writing. I used to do a blog post regularly. And I would... Um, I became discouraged in the end because I wasn't getting any feedback, you know, so I was, I was writing and I was kind of pouring out all this stuff from my heart and soul and nobody was speaking back to me. And in the end that becomes a bit soul destroying. And so um, I would go through these waves of sort of um, uh, inspiration and enthusiasm. And then I'd go down into a dip of discouragement, you know, and so I'd stop putting stuff out there. And what I've, what I've been learning with you is, um, now I'm I'm doing uh, most of my my um, putting most of my content on on the Facebook page, and so I'm just putting out fairly small pieces, but I'm doing it regularly. You know, almost every day I'll put something out either onto my own page or onto other pages that I, where I'm a member, and um, that starts to build momentum. And, and so it's it's important because it actually signals to other people that, you know, here I am, you know, I am this kind of trusted friend that, you know, that's got something to say that they might want to hear. But also, I think almost more importantly, it's, it ignites that sort of intention, you know, which, which, which then starts to have a, um, a momentum all, all of its own. So that's what I'm experiencing now, you know, after sort of six months of practicing this is that I just feel like I'm actually in, um, in an energy, in a forward energy that has a life of its own because I, it, I've developed that habit of consistently sharing. Um, you know, so I'll share stuff that's really important to me, stuff that's coming up in my, in my work, th things that are inspiring me, books that I'm reading. And it's kind of it's like right there, it's very current for me. So it, it kind of it, it connects me with myself as much as connecting me with other people. Yeah, that's so wonderful. What you said there about here I am, I'm here, you know, sharing on a consistent basis. You mentioned trusted friend. I think that is what happens when we are willing to become consistent, not judging ourselves, um, but just putting it out there on Facebook page. And of course, in the beginning, when you have zero audience, you may want to start with some Facebook ads to get the content out to the people who could benefit from it. But usually most of us have some network that could benefit from our content. You know, it could be just 10, 10 of our Facebook friends could benefit of our, you know, from our, but it's, it's this consistency that creates the sense of reliability and trust um, with our audience. And I think also with ourselves, you know, because when we keep showing up, we know that, you know what, this is important enough for me. Um, and that signals to our, maybe our muse, you might, we might say, our creative muse, that this is important enough, I'm gonna keep showing up, and so keep giving me creative ideas. And so I love that you're, you're showing up publicly now with your content, you know, with these short posts. And some of, so you've been, you've been using, just so that everyone is aware, and you know, they'll see it on your Facebook page, but um, tell us a bit about what you've seen, what you've noticed seems to be working better in terms of the content and you, you you use you use short posts you've done some videos as well but yeah mm. tell, tell us a bit about that um i i find that when i really write something that's very relevant for me right now and i write in a very authentic way that that's when people relate most 
you know um so it's 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 personal but it's connected with the you know with the overall theme of the work and it's authentic and um and it's current and um yeah, so I find that there's some po- you know some posts I can I can spend a long time writing a post and nobody responds at all. But when I really just speak from what's really uppermost for me, it's some, some somehow I think because we're all connected, we're all connected into a collective consciousness. So um, that's really the, the place I start from with my work. Is if I'm really if I'm really um, checking into myself, then I'm bound to be also connecting with other people because we're all experiencing similar similar things. I love that. I love that. And this is why I believe so much in when we're building an authentic business, we start with that inspiration and what's authentic and real, sometimes vulnerable for us right now. Um, Because if we are feeling it, if we're experiencing it, chances are our ideal audience is probably experiencing it as well. And once we do that, we then start growing a, an audience of kindred spirits, the people who are like, yes, I feel you. It's not c- contrived content. It's authentic content. You know? yes. And once you start building that audience, of course, then they will be telling you or you can ask them what kinds of product services that you know, they want you to create, et cetera. And that's how we, that's how we grow. So I really am happy for you to, uh, that, that you shared that, that example. And I think hope, hopefully people who are watching this will go to your Facebook page and start to notice the, one, the postings that feel authentic to them, that feel really good. And they, they can let you know how I like this piece, you know, et cetera. So it's always good to get feedback. Um, so maybe we can start to give those watching more of a context of what you offer. So Tribe and Transition, um, you have a, a lot of different programs and books, uh, but maybe you want to highlight a couple now and give us a sense of that. Okay, thanks, George. Yeah, I'm just about to um, to bring out a few new programs, actually. Um, I've been kind of working away behind the scenes, and now I'm, I'm ready to start moving forward with some of what I've been creating. So one of them is called Build Your Soul Sanctuary, and it's an eight-day um, program of essential transformational skills for people who are either um, on a healing path or on a creative path because I think those two things are very actually interconnected and interwoven and it's how how to help people to build the ideal inner conditions for either their creativity or their healing so um so I'm going to be um putting that out um, next week. <laughs> and it's an <laughs> that, online program so that people yes. from anywhere around the world are able to take it. Absolutely. That. And it's one, it's one that people can do on their own. There's support from me, but you know, it's just a, an, an eight day program with audios and meditations and questions for inquiry and that sort of thing. So that's generally what I'm trying to encourage people to do is to really um, inquire into their own experience and find what's right for them. It's yeah. great. Wonderful. So I will put a link. We'll put a link in the notes for those who want to check that out. Um, so you said you're about to launch it. It's a DIY pro do it yourself program. So people, it's not something that starts on a particular date. They can take it later as well. Yeah, that's right. So that'll be sort of available ongoing. Um, and then there's another program that like, I'm really excited about, which I'm calling transformational um, practitioner support group <laughs> and and this is for people who are working in any any kind of field actually who can relate to that that idea about being a transformation practitioner it's kind of a new name really I just you know it's it's the words that I think best best sum up what I'm trying to describe but those of us who are you know this this process of of transformation is, is quite new really in our culture and I think those of us who are involved in doing transformational work we're learning it uh, you know from the inside out as we go and um, what I want to do is give people a forum where we can come together and um, find a common language, you know, so that we can we can have a, a more solid ground to stand on so that we really know, you know, what are we talking about when we're talking about um, a transformational process, when we talk about helping other people to transform? What does that mean? What are the skills that are involved in that? What does that mean to us internally? You know, what, what, what do we have to work through in ourselves in order to be able to help others? Um, and I'm, I'm really excited. I've done similar things to that. I've never done anything quite like this, but done similar things. And I find that when people come together intentionally um, with, it, with that kind of focus, that something quite magical happens, you know, that, that we, we actually create a bigger 
um, more inspiring energy field that that feeds everybody so we actually start to bring in inspiration just by coming together like that and and that means that we can all move forward um, more quickly and more easily and more confidently so so that's uh, that's the idea with that one and really I love that you said when you know, when we come together there's this energy field that's created it's so true and this is why community is so important um, and this is an online community so that people are able to meet people, meet kindred spirits from all over the world and do it from the comfort of their own home, office, et cetera. So that's wonderful. That's great. That's great. Um, and we'll put the link for that as well. Is there anything else you want to share in terms of your offerings or your business? Um, well, I, I have another offering that's going to be coming out in a few weeks. Uh, this is something I've been working on for a while. I, I've been through uh, quite a big healing process myself in the last couple of years. Um, uh, my, my, my closest friend and then my brother died quite quickly. And so I've been doing my own process of what I call sitting with death. And um, through that, I've, I've gained a lot of insights into the, the grieving, the process of grief and loss. And, and again, you know, all, even though that's a really uncomfortable process to be in when you're in it, it actually also holds a huge transformational opportunity. There's a real opportunity there because when you're kind of at your most vulnerable um, and everything's been stripped away, that's the ideal time to be able to sort of to take a movement forward into something new. Mm. So I, I'm, I'm emerging out the other end of that process. And um, I know a lot of people are going through something similar. So um, I've put together three eBooks with, um, a series of 18 conversations that I've done with healing practitioners, which are quite intimate conversations about their own process of, of grief and loss in different ways. And um, I want to use those to, um, to start again, to, to bring people together in conversation. So, so yeah, I'm excited about that too. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Great. Well, um, Rose, thank you for, for taking the time to do this interview. I hope it's given those who are watching some inspiration about a new way of thinking about marketing. Uh, you talk about tribe and transition and, you know, get, getting into the new, new, the new cooperative culture and paradigm. And I think that's what, of course, that's, that's why we're aligned. That's what my work is about is, is authentic marketing, which is community building and sharing from the authentically most inspired parts of ourselves. Um, so I really hope that those who are watching will go to your links and kind of follow along with you in your journey of continuing to develop your authentic business. And if anybody watching is inspired by any of Rose's offerings, please do contact her and, and sign up and experience that for yourself. So, mm -hmm. uh, Rose, I thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to share before we adjourn? Um, Oh, just to say thank you very much for this opportunity and um, to, to also mention that I'm in, I'm in George's Master Heart um, group, which is a group of about 30 or so like-minded people. And it's, it's really wonderful. It's just in a really wonderful sort of peer community where we are living that, that new collaborative culture. And um, yeah. yes, yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. So thanks, Rose. And thanks, everyone. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thank you.